In a business world whose rules are being rewritten by disruptive startups and the rising millennial generation, is there still room for middle management? INSEAD Professor of Strategic Management Kui Hui says yes, and he goes further, arguing that middle managers can actually spearhead adaptation to these massive changes in the business environment. He joins us now on INSEAD Knowledge. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Ben. How would you say middle managers are typically viewed, and do you think that view is justified? Yes, uh, Ben. Now with the advent of the internet and advanced electronic communications, there has been a growing belief that top managers can just communicate directly with uh, lower, you know, professional workers, directly to tens of thousands of people. And there's no need to have these intermediate layers in the middle, called the middle managers, who in some instances, not always, tend to be viewed as reasons to change, bureaucratic, uh, distorting information, uh, slowing things down. Right? And so the, I want to go against this uh, stereotypical view of middle managers, because in my research, I found that middle managers can play an extremely valuable role for organizations including uh, tools of innovation and change. I wanted to delve more deeply into that because you've written that middle managers can actually lead strategic change within organizations, and I'd love to hear more. Uh, yes, I just want to uh, remind of the, f uh, of the four uh, uh, valuable roles that I found in my research in middle management. So those four roles are, just, for the, just to, 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 to summarize, uh, one is they can play the role of entrepreneurs. Why so? Because middle managers tend to have people who know the local markets and the local technologies. Usually they are experts who are promoted from the ranks. So they are better to, to come up with uh, creative ideas that suits the markets and, and the, uh, and the uh, suits market technologies sometimes better than top managers. Point number two, they are, they are, they are famous uh, informal networkers. Meaning what? Meaning that ten top managers, as you know, tend to come from, usually, but not always, tend to come from outside. But middle managers tend to be people who have been there for 10 years, not 20 years. Right? So obviously, those years of tenure give them the advantage of the informal networks. They know and they have built the networks of trust, which top managers seldom had the time to build inside the same organization. The third role that I found in, in that how middle managers can facilitate radical change is a change tend to be very emotionally that disruptive. Right? People are beset with anxieties, you know, the fear of the unknown, what's happened to my career, what's happened to my job, will, be, uh, will my uh, competencies be valued under the new strategy? You know? And top managers cannot answer these questions at each and every level of your employee. Because to be able to answer this question, you have to know each and every employee intimately. And if you are managing an organization with tens of thousands of people, obviously, you, know, you cannot do that. Right? So that's the third role of to become a, a therapist, in a sense. And the last role that I found that middle managers can do most times better than top, than top managers is to balance change and continuity in organizations. Because we tend to talk too much about change. You know? Every time you just, uh, it, it top managers come in, we talk about change, radical change. You know, we have to change for the better. We have to do disruptive change. But people forget that organizations thrive on continuity. One thing we hear a lot is that millennials in particular are self-directed. They hate being supervised in that conventional way. What can middle managers offer this generation? Yes, Ben. In this new generation, thanks to the internet and the, uh, the way that uh, so-called more modern parents are raising their kids, the, the, the helicopter parents, yeah, you're supposed to guide and inspire uh, your children not to be kind of these stern family figures and uh, using harsh punishment to force people their children. It's no longer um, cool to do these kind of things. And so uh, as uh, the millennials grew up, they also expect a kind of quasi-egalitarian relationships, you know, but at the same time caring and, 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 and protecting and guiding roles by their parents. And, 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 and that expectations maybe consciously or subconsciously can get filtered into organizations as well. 
So I would see that the, a valuable role that Middleton can play with the new millennial generation is me a coach, a guide. And your most recent work on this topic, it concerns middle managers in state-owned enterprises in China. Why did you choose this group to study? There is a growing public demand for higher government intervention and control you know, of the so-called uncontrollable and dishonest organizations. So what happens is that middle managers in the, in the next era, I hypothesize they would be more required to deal with government officials and even members of various political parties. China has long been very controlling of its corporations. And the state-owned organizations uh, in China are somewhat an extreme example of that. By that, I mean that the Communist Party of China appointed local party officials who are also government officials at all levels in the organization. So in order to investigate how middle managers who operate in such a high controlling environment can still meet their market objectives, meaning higher profits or, or high innovation, which uh, most middle managers in the Western companies have to perform. And it is already a challenge. Just to achieve that is already a challenge. But at the same time, has to balance the need to meet market objectives you know, with the need to deal on a day-to-day -day basis, literally, with the interventions and scrutiny of political appointees, government officials, to meet their social and, po and political needs is a challenge. So by studying the SOEs in China, it gives it a very good microcosm of the challenges that middle managers face and, and, and that many middle managers in the Western organizations may have to face in the near future. And your research on middle managers has spanned several years. Uh, if you had to boil it all down to one key takeaway, what would it be? We need to pay personal attention to the, to the needs and the personal development of every knowledge workers because each and every one is important for the organization. You know, any, orga any employee can become a future uh, Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg. We want to keep them, right? So we need to motivate these knowledge workers. At the same time, the larger the organization becomes, the less the time top managers have to, to, to have in order to pay the personal needs of the, the, for these people. Third thing, people want to talk to people. They don't want to talk to a computer. I don't think for the next one of the years, people would like to be comforted by a, com a computer. Not yet, right? So we need people. Therefore, we will need middle managers, despite all of these advances in technologies that we talked about. Professor Kui, thank you very much. Thank you, Ben.